as you can see they're epic they're also on sale the liberal tears mugs and everything the original is still on there and i actually have something very special to show you guys i have one in real life so here it is this is what it looks like as you can see it's printed extremely high quality and um what i didn't know is that i actually have it on both sides so if you're right-handed or left-handed uh you'll be able to see a liberal tears mug from either side and don't forget you can also order it without the smiley face if you don't like that uh, but it's actually the most popular one was pretty funny so here you go here it is check out the new website you can read the description if you want check it out thank you guys let's get into the video see you later so rubia just to get everybody on the same page here can you explain what it is we're talking about when we talk about safe spaces yeah so um in this conversation with safe spaces we're going to talk about two different types of safe spaces and so first is a safe space in the classroom and that is basically allowing any student that's there with any sort of identity any sort of background that they have to be able to have a free flow of ideas and the second sort of safe space we're talking about is a actual physical safe location for different um, identity groups. So for example, a student who is from the LGBT community will have a safe space on campus, which is kind of like a room that everybody else who is from that same community can come and get together, can organize. And right now on campus, we actually have six of those safe spaces. It's the RSU Equity Service Centers. And those are free from anybody who does not identify with that um, community to not enter that and let that be kind of like one room on campus, aside from this whole huge campus to just right. organize basically. So, so you're the VP of Equity for the Virus and Students Union, mm -hmm. uh, and, y and you mentioned these, these equity centers, and you also mentioned that they're for these specific community groups. Yeah. What, what does that mean for these specific community groups? Does that mean that you know, other community groups are, are excluded, or is it more of just a, 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 a spot for these groups to meet? Can it you elaborate? Yeah, so um, it is basically a room on campus. That's what it is. It's like a room pro probably smaller than this where they can talk about any sort of issues that that community is facing. And so the thing with creating solutions or events or anything with certain communities is to have people who are from that community themselves come and do the organizing, come and do the talking, come and do the solution making basically. And if we look at the whole campus itself, anybody is allowed to access it wherever. So for one group who is marginalized, who is oppressed, to ask for one room on campus just to organize, just to have that as kind of a safe space away from any sort of oppression or trigger, I don't think that would be too much to ask for. And so, for example, if there's an organizing meeting, I think it should be respected that if you don't come from that actual group, that you just let these people organize and create whichever events or anything that they want to do. Right. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so Dan, uh, to, to loop you in, just to kind of catch everybody up who's watching, um, the Ryersonian ran a story on some comments that you made two weeks ago regarding, you know, these safe spaces Absolutely. that we're talking about. Absolutely. And, and you were the VP of, of Corporate Relations for Ryerson's Marketing uh, Association, and, and you've been involved in student politics this I'm year. I'm also on the RSU as well. Right, exactly. So, the com these comments included things like, uh, just to quote, is, Please, if you need a safe space, go home. You can you can Absolutely. be safe there. And I'm growing sick of this childish nonsense. I didn't pay thousands of dollars to be coddled like a little bitch. I am not going to take it anymore, and neither should you. What was kind of the inciting factor, yeah. you know, for these comments? And Absolutely. Well, first of all, the reason I had to kind of use you know such profane language was you know to get me to get a voice to get me on stage. And look where I am now. We're talking about these issues. And to allude to the point where um, you know you go home, you can be safe there. I wasn't referring uh, specifically to people who have abusive environments at home. You know, we have channels and, and platforms where those people are taken care of. I was referring to people who simply don't have the emotional maturity to be in a university, an institution of higher learning. We're not running a daycare center here, okay? This is a university where you go to see uh, differing viewpoints and to be scrubbing the campus clean of, of differing viewpoints, of dissenting, you know, political discourse, things like that is really the antithesis of what a university is supposed to be. Um, you know, students, I've had a vast majority of students who, who are afraid, uh, some of them are here, who are afraid themselves to speak up and, and talk about certain things because of the intimidation, the bullying. Um, it's really a bully tactic. It's not about being nice, it's about control. This is what this whole movement is about. And I really think that it's, it's quite regressive. They say it's progressive, and, and Rabbi, you said it's a solution. Well, I actually think it's a symptom of a larger problem of po extreme political correctness. It's not a solution at all. When you're segregating these people off, you're basically, you know, this ideology doesn't want people as individuals. They want them as the identity. Black, white, brown, straight, gay, whatever. They want to put you in that bucket. They want to teach you what to think. They don't want to teach you how to think. It goes back to the days of Socrates. We used to teach people how to think critically. Now we're teaching them what to think. 
We're teaching them to have a very thin skin. We should be teaching people to have a thick skin. I mean, it's a tough world out there. And to be productive members of society and to fight for a better world, uh, we need to have a thick skin. And it's really regressive, I think, these okay. policies are. So I guess to speak to that point, you know, Rabia, you know, there's criticism, I guess, uh, in the general public that these safe spaces kind of, you know, they create echo chambers and they inhibit, you know, these critical conversations from, from reaching the people that need to hear them. Uh, do you think that's a fair assessment? You know, do you think what Dan's saying is a fair assessment? Is there a way to combat that? Uh, so, again, a lot of people come from very different walks of life and experience very, very different things, right? right? You can't expect somebody to have a thick skin because that's how society works, right. right? You can't expect that. There are people who emotionally can't, physically can't, they just can't do it. And to expect them because that's how society works, you should not be blaming that person for not being able to do that. Maybe it's another look on society. So you're saying they're Why immature, is what you're saying. They're, they're too immature, is what you're saying. You cannot equate that to immaturity, though. Well, it's emotional because, immaturity. Well, let's, no. let's okay. Okay. Yeah, you cannot, because... Sure, you may have a lot of great things that you can accomplish. You may have a really good support system, you may, like you may have a safe space at home kind of thing. A lot of students do not have that, and they carry that burden on them every time because they don't have supports, maybe on campus, maybe outside, maybe in the home, to basically help them with that. And the thing is, you can't expect them to overnight just to have that sort of ideology. Yeah. No, either. you're right, and that's why I think okay, that... So, so to, to speak to that point, I guess, yeah. to bring that back to you. No, for sure, it's a good um, point. You know, you, these these safe spaces, these spots on campus, they are, you know, you're a member of an exec team on campus. I'm sure that you have these, you know, private closed door meetings that, you know, only your exec can be Absolutely, privy to. And, yeah. and Rabia, I'm sure that, you know, the RSU Well, it's exec an educational function, too. but your right. point is made. So, you know, likewise in the newsroom, you know, we have the same kind of things where there are only Ryersonian staff sure, involved. Sure, sure. And this isn't because we're attempting to, you know, exclude people, but it's so that we can get to the heart of what the issues that our organizations needs to be focusing mm -hmm. on and yeah, dealing right, with. Okay. And, and we're all on the well, same well, page on that, I'm, I'm imagining. But what is the difference, I guess, for, in your opinion, well, let me, between let me address, these Let me address what you're saying. Is the difference with, you know, something like an educational meeting and, yeah. and one of these meetings is that we're actually teaching people, like I said, putting them into buckets, teaching them to be victims. We're opening the door for victimhood. And when you teach that, it actually becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. People well, what happens when they actually are victims and they are actually working towards creating a different environment where they themselves don't well, yeah, have to no, be the victim anymore? Well, yeah, no, that's a good you know? thing. And that, yep. is sh that should be something we should be emphasizing. See, the people on the left, they're obsessed with equal uh, outcome when they should be fo equal outcome of the collective, their herd mentality. They should be focused on equal opportunity of the individual, of individual rights. These people have individual rights. They're individuals with individual skill sets. Um, this mentality, this ideology that you're proposing is, is herd mentality. You're, you're collectivizing people. And, you know, what made our society so great is the individual, not the collective. That's like other stuff. That's like Soviet Union stuff. And it's leading down a very slippery slope. When you're censoring free speech on campus, when you're, you claim to be the VP equity, but when you're kicking out... Well, she is the VP equity. I am. Yeah, well, you, you're claiming to be equal. When you're kicking out white students because of the color of their skin at a racialized students collective, having that policy on the books, but when that's not very good. But yeah. are like when white students themselves are not racialized, I don't well, How understand. do you know that? You're racializing me right now no. by saying I can't go to these Racial spaces. So, see, that's another thing. There's a lot of learning and unlearning that I see that you need to do. You and need to do the no, learning. No, no, no. Well, okay, yeah. so to, to, to tamper down and, and step back, you yeah. know, the conversation around these safe spaces and, and where there are places on campus, yeah. you know, it is obviously a sensitive issue, as we're seeing right now. Yeah. But, you know, that doesn't mean, you know, that the, the criticism and, and being talked about in a critical way isn't necessary. Looking forward, you know, what can we as a school community, you know, do to ensure that we're treating this issue with the sensitivity and the tact that is required when we're questioning these issues? What, what can we do? So a lot of the equity service centers actually hold a lot of events where any student on campus can come and learn about why these equity service centers exist and why these students have issues and why these issues are valid. Okay. Right? And so what I do is I ask anybody who kind of questions why these centers exist to please come out to these events and actually try and learn with an open mind. Like I'm sitting here, I'm listening to what you say. I'm a business student. I totally, like I can understand where you're coming from, but I can be critical of a lot of things that you say the same that you're going to be critical with a lot of things that I say. But again, just try and learn. Hear the other person out of why they are collecting, like why they're Well, no, I do right? totally understand what you're saying, but I'm actually saying that it's working against the goal of what you're trying to achieve. Because, again, you're fulfilling the self-fulfilling prophecy. You're obsessed with equal outcome of the collective, but you yes. should be focusing on the individual rights and the equal opportunity of the individual. Not outcome, opportunity is what you should be focusing on. 
and and I, I don't get it. Can you be a little more specific? Yeah, yeah I'm totally lost. I, I on think that. just like reclarify what you. Were what, yeah. what I'm saying is that you know it's the herd mentality, right? Like everybody who's in one group, they put them in the bucket of of you know whatever segment. Is, say it's it's straight or white. You put them in the bucket. You teach them. Now they're in this bucket. Now they're part of this collective. And now the collective is taught what to think and you know what to get offended by. And you know you see people all over campus that are of these you know, racialized or are of different demographics, but they don't need the safe space because they, they're smarter than that. They, they are more emotionally mature. See, that's the thing. You can't tell people what safe space they do and do not need. That's on their own self to ask if they well, need a right. safe space. Well, you're right. We've created a society you where people need safe spaces, and you're absolutely yeah. right. And I think that we need to reverse these steps. So I think the first step is we should restructure these safe mm -hmm. spaces so people still have an opportunity to speak about their issues. I think that's important. I think we should restructure these safe spaces into student groups so the uh, potential for abuse is removed. The potential for abuse of segregation is removed. We can't be segregating what students is, with public funds. What is potential for abuse? Kind of, what, yeah. are you, what are you the speaking potential for abuse is at a safe space. Um, you know, you have the two white kids in the in the event, the racialized students collective getting kicked out. See, I don't find that acceptable. And as a VP Equity, you should be you know totally outraged by that. Not really, because if it's talking about, can you please not make noises back there? Anyway, so if you are talking about issues that racialized students face, right? If I am talking in a classroom, there's going to be white people, black people, everybody around, and they can listen, right? If I want to talk specific issues that racialized students face, I do not think that white people need to be in that space. Because racialization is people who are other than white. That's what being racialized is. It's a, so you're basically it's a drawing a battle issue. line between... It's, but it, that's you know, the thing. Like, what I see is happening is that they're demonizing white people. Well, okay, they're it's drawing it's fine. battle back lines. Back up, back up. When, you yeah. know, we've, we've heard kind of what the response is. So, so, Dan, what do you, what would you propose yeah, no, as, great the, question. as the great fix, question, kind though. of, you know, what are you saying you want to see happen to these safe I want, spaces I in want, the future? It, it can't be done overnight. These people have become dependent on these safe spaces. So we should have a place, uh, I believe that they would be better called student groups than safe spaces. You know, a lot of people think safe spaces are ridiculous. If you go into the real world, they're all talking about it. It actually discredits the value of the university. The real world. We're I think that, we, okay, okay, we should restructure right? the safe space into student groups. So people still have a, a platform to talk about their issues. Okay. I, I think that we could both agree on that. Um, so you agree that you know people should be able to speak about their issues. I agree on no, that as 100%. well. And I think that you know restructuring them would get rid of a lot of the problems and a lot of the stigma around the safe spaces because again it's discrediting the university by you know basically turning the university into a daycare center. And I don't I think it's a regressive. It's totally regressive. It's not progressive at all. Okay. So I guess okay. to end off, you know, Rabia, yeah. do you wanna do you wanna about any of that? Yeah, I guess another thing to ask is who are the people that actually have these problems? That's so, what I want to know. Sorry? Who are the people that have these problems? Have what problems? Right, problems with safe spaces. It's people who do not access safe spaces. That's the thing, it's people who do not need safe spaces. Well, it's, a, it's so, an issue of free speech in, in it's, society. But see, that's the thing. We have free speech, but there's a limit to that free speech. If your free speech is impeding on somebody's right to exist, Impeding on somebody's right to basically There's no limits to say free whatever they in a free country. This is something that is a fundamental. If you say something discriminatory against me as being a woman, being a Muslim woman as well, you do not have that right. To I have the speech. right That's to do it being, within the law. You, I do have that right. So you need to read the Constitution. Oh, I think you do as there, well. You're right. You're Again, right. There's there a lot of protection. Yeah, okay, okay. There's okay. a lot of between between protection. Harassment. Okay, okay. I don't agree with harassment. Yep. But I agree with free speech, and people need to realize I don't agree with hate speech, but hate speech is free speech. To an extent, uh, if you're harassing or threatening someone, I don't agree with that. I'm not a mean person. Like you say, be, uh, you, the, the idea is I don't care about these people because I'm denouncing safe spaces. It's the opposite. I care about these people, and I think that the safe spaces are working against the end goal. When you're segregating yourselves off into ever shrinking subsets of the population, you're actually being regressive. You're not being progressive at all. Okay. Is there any yeah. last leaving closing point? We've heard from from Dan on, on where he yeah. wants to leave. Where where do you want to leave off with Again, this? The only the thing I want to end off with this is that you're basically speaking on behalf of people who need safe spaces and telling them what is good for them. I do not have the right to tell the LGBT community what's good for them because I am not from the community. I have no right to tell them what to do. Well, I have the right to say right? whatever I want, really. You do, but it depends on who's listening. If not they really. don't, it, it says well, they don't have to listen. Yes, but they don't. Yeah, they don't have to listen to you. 
most likely will not. They will keep on organizing. Racialized people will keep okay. on organizing. So, okay, thank I just you. Want one I think rebuttal we're to that point. Well, I think so we've reached our time. To what limit, I'm so saying, we're going to say, I think we're. Then why do they care about what other people say? If they're not listening to what I'm Dan, saying, why are they so reached our time limit. So, okay. thank you both for joining us today. Um, we really look forward to continuing this discussion, uh, you know, further on campus. Um, but thank you so much for taking thank the time you. to talk thank to you, us. Baby. I'm just stopping by to remind you that liberals are insane! <laughs> Social justice warriors are becoming more violent and triggered than ever before! Anyways, be sure to subscribe to KGP TV on YouTube and have a blessed day. Yeah, man!